Hey there guys, what is going on? Midnight Assassin 2003 here, and we are back today. Yeah, today. What? I didn't skip out. Alright, so, anyway, we are back with another full metal aircraft. Um, and today I am reviewing, you guys are going to find this hilarious, the Metal Aircraft Corporation's Flamingo G2-W. Um, yeah. The Flamingo. Yeah. It, uh, definitely looks like a Flamingo to me. Totally. Yeah. Anyway, besides that point of pink birds, um... This aircraft is not pink, but it is a bird. So, that's something. Anyway, besides that, uh, we are taking off yet again from Hamilton International Airport, as usual. Um, also, I put a link to the last aircraft, the donor comment, in the description below. I shall do the same for this aircraft if I can manage to frickin' find it because of that long name it's got there. Um, so if you guys want to find this aircraft on simvation.com, I'll try my best to get the, um, download file or, uh, the, the link to it, uh, in the description below. So check that out if you guys want to get the Flamingo after I do a uh, review on it. So anyway, uh, let's do some background history of the airplane before we get into the sky. So... This particular aircraft right here, as we all know, this aircraft was built by the Metal Aircraft Corporation, uh, which was a company who made metal aircraft. So this entire airplane's frame and fuselage was all made of die-cast metal, besides of, you know, some parts. So pretty much what they mean is that the entire plane is made of metal, besides the wheels and some other things like wires and all that. but. All on the outside and even on the inside is made of die-cast metal. Anyway, this airplane was built in 1929. Um, it had a capacity of about eight passengers. It was a civil transport aircraft made in America. Um, it uh, was only about 32.6 um, inches long and was about nine feet and six inches tall. Um, it had a power plant or its engine was the Pratt & Whitney um, R1340 Wasp, which is a normal American engine you'd find on most of these airplanes. Um, it was a nine-cylinder air-cooled radical piston engine that produced about 410 horsepower um, or 310 kilowatts. That's not bad for a plane like this. So the aircraft's maximum speed was about 135 miles per hour or 217 kilometers an hour. So it was a little bit faster uh, than the Comet. Um, and its cruising speed was 115. So that would be like when you reach cruising altitude and you just chill and you're just going. So that's pretty good. Um, in kilometers, that would be 185. Um, it had a range of about uh, 1,000 miles or 1,609 kilometers. It's pretty good. And a rate of climb is 800 feet. Even though it's a closed cockpit aircraft, they wouldn't really go any higher than that for safety reasons. Anyway, without all of that, let's stop talking. Well, I can't really stop talking because i got to give you guys a presentation of the plane. But let's get it in the air, shall we? Okay, releasing uh, my parking brake there. All right, let's get the um, battery on. So that's good. Uh, this plane, I do not think, had flaps. Yeah, it doesn't have flaps. Okay, that's fine. Uh, all right, this guy's holding a map that is not of Canada or Ontario or anything like that. Anyway, uh, let's get the window rolled up or pushed up. All right, that, that's cool too. Okay, so I couldn't really find any sort of, you know, on switch, like magneto switch for this plane, so I, I'm just going to have to use shift E for this. Oh, wait, no. That's 
wrong one. There we go, control E, sorry. Okay, power's right up. Perfect. Okay, let's get the bird in the air, shall we? This pink flamingo ain't gonna fly itself. Okay, let's rock and roll. Alrighty. So, now that everything is not in German anymore, I can actually kind of explain what some of the instruments are. Jeez, that is one loud ass engine. Holy crap. Okay, so, that's our fuel. Labeled pretty well. RPM, altitude emitter, got a clock. Uh, that's our generator, so for amps. And that's our speedometer actually miles per hour instead of kilometers, which would usually be on some airplanes, not all of them, but on a few of them. And liftoff. We have a liftoff of the big flamingo. Okay, so, as usual, I'm just going to be doing like a little round, you know, like around the airport. Holy shit, this thing is so loud, it's vibrating my headphones. I can feel the vibration on my ear, it's, it's funny. Okay, there we go, that looks good. That is loud. It's a loud plane. Yeah, well, that, that that's usual, you know, on, on these things, you know. With these, you don't really talk to the guy when you're flying. You know, you, you, you just gotta explain it all on the ground, unless you got some good hearing. And if you feel like screaming while you're in the cockpit, it's, it's, not, it's not closed off from people, so, you know, but in here, oh. I didn't even notice that yet. Um, it appears that the back of the plane has broken off, but, you know, that, that's fine. If it's still flying, that's okay. So, um, everything else is looking just fine. Um, the airplane actually handles really well. I haven't really flown it a whole lot. I just downloaded it for, you know, fun. But it handles really well, as you can see. It's not like I'm not even holding the yoke down. It's, it's just cruising straight. It is pitching up a little bit, but not as much. Um, oh, and uh, right here you can see the classic wing design on most of these planes for proper airflow to go through. Um, yeah, this is a very nice airplane. I, I do like it. I wouldn't really say that this could be used as a bush plane, although it does have some pretty big looking tires down there, but uh, I wouldn't really trust that. But anyway, this particular airplane was used um, in World War II, sort of. I say that very loosely, sort of. As a military transport aircraft, it was slightly used in World War II, because this is a post-World War I aircraft, but if it was built in 1929, we all know what that means. So that's not even really 11 years before World War II starts, because World War II started on September 1st, 1939, we all know that, um, and it ended, actually, on the 2nd of September, 1945. Whoa, didn't see that coming, did ya? No siree, well, you probably did unless, you know, other things. But, yeah, this airplane was used for civil transport and cargo, um, but this particular model, you can probably see, it's got two seats in the back that kind of look like they're made of, um, I think what we call them, straw. They look like one of those straw chairs that you see on a beach or something. And then in the back you just got that cargo space, but that's not really going to be doing you much if you got a rectangular hole perfectly cut out of the, <laughs> cut out of the back of the plane. But you know what, that's, that's fine. We'll deal with that later. Um, but yeah, going back to the point where this plane is really loud, um, they couldn't really muffle the sound of the engine because this glass, it wasn't thick. That didn't really count either because it was right there. Uh, but, you know, most of these planes were always really loud. Um, you know, it kind of simmered down a little bit when we started actually putting mufflers in there. So you could actually hear the guy beside you right now, this, this guy, you know, he's just wearing those hat, you know, or a helmet or whatever that is. It looks like a helmet, but it's a hat of some sort. It's earmuffs on there. He can't even talk. He can't really do anything, because if he does, you know, it's going to be a game.
game of charades of what you're trying to say. I don't know why he's holding that map, because that's covering all of this. There's some important instruments behind that map that I need to see. But, you know, that's fine. Okay, let's turn back around and land this pink flamingo. Um, but yeah, if I was going to rate this plane, I'd probably rate it maybe a solid 6 out of 10, maybe 7, probably. Um, it is a good airplane, I'm not going to lie. I do kind of like it. I haven't flown it a lot, as I mentioned, but it's okay, you know. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely put the link to this airplane in the description below if you guys want to pick it up for yourselves and fly it. It's not bad, it handles really well, so that's a plus. It's most, uh, most airplanes, you know, they'll pitch up a lot. This one here, once I get it to a cruising sort of speed, it doesn't pitch up so much, but I got the trim wheels, so I'll just trim it a little bit. That's not really doing much. So. But that's, that's fine. It's, it's life, you know. But, uh, yeah. It's an okay plane. Okay, now for the landing. So, none of these airplanes had actual flaps. No flaps. Why? They didn't need them. They were not fast enough. So, yeah. But, as the thing mentioned, it could go to 185, but, you know, that's like if you flew it up to 10,000 feet or 20,000 feet and nosedived it, you might get there, but otherwise it would be cruising at 115, which is being shown right here, I think that's 115, 120, so that's usually a cruising speed for this plane. Um, I don't even know why they would put 500 miles an hour on there, because the odds of that happening are so low, like, I don't even know how this thing would get up to 500 miles an hour. Like, what the hell? So that's something else. But, uh, yeah. It's an alright plane. It's pretty well detailed. This aircraft is, all, is uh, also not really well known around the aircraft community. A, a few people probably know of it, but not a whole lot. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know this plane existed until I found it on the website because I was looking for airplanes to get and I was like, oh, what's this? It has a funny ass name for a plane. And, oh, it's vintage. Download now. So that that's it. That's how I stumbled across the flamingo. But uh, yeah, if you guys like the bird, um, let me know, you know? And um, also, Please let me know anything else. Like, if you guys want me to do a review on a plane... Oh, I've got my navigation lights. That's, that's not good. Um, anyway, so if you guys would like me to do a certain review on a kind of plane, you know, just let me know. And if I can find it on Simvation or um, Flyaway, sim, uh, simulator.com, I'll do it. You, know, you just gotta let me know. Um, but yeah, from now on, I'm gonna try putting the links to the aircraft and description below. Um, so if you haven't seen the first one, um, if you check its description box, hopefully the link actually works and it should send you right to the aircraft where you can download it. Um, downloading them is easy. There's a lot of videos of how to download them on the internet, so I don't really need to do that because that just take me a while and probably confuse me as well, so... I'll just stick to downloading them and reviewing them for you guys and putting the links in the description for you. Okay, let's see how good I can stick the landing on this one here. It's got the wheels of a push plane. Damn. But it does have a big propeller, so, you know, that's something else, too. Also, all the, uh, like, the kind of creaky sounds that you guys are hearing, that's just my yoke, in case you guys were it's, it's plastic, so, you know, but it's, it does the job. Oh, a little bounce there. Okay, let's set it down. I think the rear landing... 
Yep, okay, so the rear landing gear has now touched the pavement and we are stopping. That was a very fast stop. I'm very surprised about that. Okay. Engines are now shut off. I can now open up my window. Great flying, Tony. Just gonna open up his window for him. Oh. Oh, they both open and close at the same time. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't notice that. Oh, all right, well, that's cool, I guess. Okay, um, I'll just turn the battery off, and then that's really all you got to do for this thing. Park and brake, I'll put that on later. Okay, so anyway, if you guys did enjoy this um, quick little flight of the uh, Flamingo, be sure to leave a like and hit the uh, subscribe button there, um, and uh, do check your uh, the description to find this airplane if you want to get it. Um, but yeah, do leave a like, hit the subscribe button, turn those post notifications on so you don't miss out on any new video coming out. Um, and I will talk to you guys on the flip-flop side. Ciao.